you to add to the sanctuary as well. If you don't, can't add that way, then you have to find other ways. But we still have to add to the sanctuary in the house of the Lord, right? And um, the promise, that's the promise right there. To your children and their children and their children and their children. And that's the way it's going to go. Even though the devil's telling you a few lies about that. But his covenants never fail. They never fail. He wants, remember that when we go into his presence, there's a few things that he tells us to say right and we, it just they just seem so simple that they to us they might lose their importance because we become so we believe ourselves to be so important to God but yet we are right just like he was saying this morning worth um, something is worth what the buyer is willing to pay if you have an antique and it's little, but it's from, you know, Greece back in B.C. And there may be all the people in the world come by here and just look at it. But to somebody, they say, that little wheel, oh, my word, let me buy that from you. You know, I like this. If the price goes high enough, you go, okay, <laughs> right? Because all of a sudden, they hit your pay point, and that's what you need to consider, that though we, we are not to meddle with the things that he said, he gave all. He suffered all. All and he planned to suffer all. It wasn't just like howdy doody moment. This was in his mind from all time. He didn't want to just be in burning bushes or in oceans that parted. He wanted to dwell within and just see what kind of a difference that would make. And for us, it made all the difference in the world because the gospel is everything. The power of the word, the power of his name, everything was done so you would come. He did it all, just like Felix said this morning. He did everything. He just wanted you to be able to come to the Father, right? Even if your gift seems small to you, he was willing to pay the ultimate price. So in that way, never doubt your worth, okay? Because for you to walk around saying I'm unworthy, that's the devil's sentence. Don't be talking devil talk around yourself, okay? If Jesus gave it all, you are worth <laughs> That was the worth. I'm unworthy. Oh, well, Jesus died for me, so guess that up the ante, right? So don't talk devil talk over yourself. Remember your words are your currency, the currency of how you're going to get from this point to your dream, this point to the answer of your prayer. You're paying it out with your words. Every word you say either takes you a step back or takes you a step forward. I think it's the hardest thing for Christians to remember because we think, oh, let's just blow off a little bit and let off some steam. I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying watch your words while you're doing it. Make sure that the steam that's being let isn't canceling everything that you've just been spent the whole week, right? Because words are cups, and in each cup there is liquid, and that's the liquid that is contained with the words that you speak. So you're speaking words of faith and goodness, or you're dumping them out and saying, no, I can't believe he didn't answer yet. And, you know, that's a realistic statement, but just try to say it right. Or zip the lip, or, you know, lots of things to do. 
But I just, that's the worth. At the same time, we have to be careful not to change stuff because we're so worthy. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we're walking a fine line here. It's between the king of glory who said, you know, if you do that one more time, I'm, this ground's going to open and swallow you up. And then the other part says, I'll do anything to make you mine. So there's, there's the, the, the left, the right part, right? There's both aspects of God. So while he's merciful, we still must do the things that he says. So in the prayer, the first thing we need to do is first honor him. Honor him, him in his majesty, not in any other, you know, don't honor him as a lowly Jesus. Okay, that, that day is over. That, that happened. He was lowly then. He's not lonely anymore. He's hot and lifted up. So pay attention to what you're saying. Put him in his rightful place, our Father, which are in heaven. Okay? Make sure he's magnified. Your, your name is magnified upon the earth. You start that way. Then you, then you um, address him. So you're addressing him as the creator of everything. Then you draw him a little bit closer and say, You are the God that healeth all our diseases, right? Okay, so now I've I've just drawn the king of glory to the next position, which is his, his relationship and his covenant. Second thing, remind him of his covenant. He loves that. Lord, you've made a covenant with all your people that you would heal all thine, all their diseases, Now you're going to pull them in for the final. Hear the words of your servant today. This daughter of Abraham who's been grafted in. You who have been so kind to my family. You see what I just did? And he does that in his example of prayer. He says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now we just brought him down to earth. He didn't say, now hurry up and come so we can go to heaven. He just brought heaven and his mightiness to this earth. Now we're going to address him as, as his relationship with humanity. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay, lead us not to temptation, deliver us from the evil one. These are the things, and then when you draw them into the final place, these are your words of love. This is the words that you say from your mouth to his ears every day you're the best part of my day when you come in the room your presence overwhelms me and your spirit nourishes my heart these are the this is a way okay that i'm teaching you how to bring him to your place You address him as the king and the creator of all that he is. You say that you want the king to come to this earth. And now you say you've made a covenant with your people and I am one of your people. It's identity, 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 relationship. Remember to give God the things God said he wants. That then he wants his will to be done on this earth. And now he wants his will to be done in me. And I surrender it all. Possess me, Lord, from head to toe. I want to be over. I, I want so much of you to come out that when I walk by somebody, they just go, ooh, the love of God. Love just swept over me. What was that? Right? So This is what I'm telling you. You're worth everything to him. But when it comes to you looking to him, give him honor that is due. Bring his spirit and his will to earth and then draw him in to that little private room where it's just you and him having communication. God bless you this morning. Amen. How awesome.
Well, it's not easy going to be a grandpa and stand up here and preach the word of God. Try to do it. Why don't we stand? We're going to uh, dismiss our Sunday school, get right to the word of the Lord. Good to see you here. It's always a joy. I hope I never have to preach to four or five people ever again. Psalm 149, verses 6 through 9. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains. I like that. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. I want to preach from the subject today, how to keep the victory. All right. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Bless it in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are great at getting the victory. Turn to someone else and say, you're lousy at keeping the victory. Some years ago, we had somebody come to the church for the first time. He came to the altar and got the baptism of the Holy Ghost And begin speaking with other tongues. Some of you remember this. We baptized him in Jesus' name. He come up out of the water saying, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Apparently he didn't keep it. Because that was the last time we ever seen or heard from him. I have watched people's last act in the kingdom of God. Be a, what appeared to be a manifestation of victory. I have seen people dancing and shouting, running around, and then go out the doors somewhere between a Sunday and a Wednesday. They couldn't keep what they got. I want to teach somebody how to hang on to the victory. I want this to be more than just a superficial, spiritual or emotional stimuli. And then for us to walk out the doors. I don't want to be a broken cistern. I don't want to be a cracked pot. I want to be able to hold, come on, what God puts into me. Does anybody want to learn how to hang on? to what God gives you. Praise God. We are called to go from glory to glory. But what we tend to do, if we're not careful, we'll go from glory to defeat. Then from defeat to glory. Then from glory to defeat. And all of the while, how many's ever journaled anything? I'm not going to make fun of you. Be, you know, it's okay. We all journal. If we don't journal, actually, we do it in our spirit and in our mind. Satan wants you to chart your failures. Like my wife said, he wants you to know every facet and feature of your unworthiness. But God wants you to chart your victories. Can anybody say from today on, I'm going to make note of my blessings? I'm going to remember the words of prophecy. I'm going to recall the rhema, the times when God spoke to me. 
I'm not going to invest my energy in listing my defeats and what is against me. I'm going to start remembering, uh, amen, the glory. I'm going to start celebrating the victories. Praise God. I want to tell somebody your failure is not final. I may be speaking to someone who feels like a colossal failure. I want to tell you your failure is not final. God wants you to move from failure to victory and then from victory to victory to victory to victory. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together. And we begin, okay, we, the first thing we've got to do to keep the victory is we've got to fight with our lips. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths. Praise God. And a two-edged sword in your hand. You cannot live in victory and speak defeat. If you speak defeat, you experience defeat. If you speak victory, you'll walk in victory. Somebody needs to tell the devil like it is. I'm in God's kingdom. This is God's world. I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a royal representative, and I'm going to go from victory to victory. Put your hands together, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your mouth is like a cannon, and the words you speak are like cannon shells. And every time you worship God and give him high praise, you wrap the enemy in chains. Have you ever, some, my wife's phone is geared to the, uh, to the Bluetooth on the car, and it doesn't matter if her phone does not have a song on her playlist. The minute we get in the car and turn the motor on, the Bluetooth activates her phone and the music comes on at 10 on the dial. There have been times when she gets in the car and all of a sudden, I was worth saving! And I just get almost a paralysis over it. You just go, it's time we paralyze the devil this morning. With some high praise, when you praise God, you wrap the nobles in chains. Tie the devil up right now. Bind the enemy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. By simply celebrating the greatness of God. We have lived in a one-sided theology long enough. When we think of being bound, we credit the devil with being the binder. That anything that we use the language of being bound, and we automatically think, who did the devil tie up today? Did you know that not only, amen, sure the devil can bind people, but the church can bind the devil. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Somebody needs to tie the enemy up. You need to tie his lips shut. So he doesn't lie to you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Defeating the devil is a privilege. This honor, turn to your neighbor and say, your honor. Now, before you get too carried away and ego inflated about that, remember, your honor is to bind the kings in chains. That's right. This honor have all the saints, praise God. You are living beneath your privilege if you have never rejoiced in the power that Jesus has given you to tread on serpents and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. This 
honor have all the saints. If the saints will worship and give God the high praise, they'll tie the enemy's hands in their life, in their business, in their families, in their children. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. To execute vengeance and to bind the nobles in chains. Remember when Jesus showed up on the land of Gadara and the demon-possessed man charged him and fell at his feet and the devil said, Have you come to torment us before our time? I'm going to answer that on our behalf. Yes, Satan, we have come to torment you. You have thought that we didn't have a revelation so that we are the ones to be tormented. Not anymore. Because of Calvary, because of the power of the blood, because of the name of Jesus, we are here to torment you. In the name of Jesus, we tie you up and we throw you out. Throw him out of your future. Throw him out of your imagination. Throw him out of your home. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. What's hell running from? 2 Peter chapter number 2 verse number 4 said if God... Spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains. See, Jesus delivers us out of chains. God's people deliver the devil into chains. Somebody say chains. chains. Into chains of darkness. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 1 and verse number 2. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Resist the devil, draw nigh unto God, and he will flee. What's he running from? Savannah and Jonathan got this big Siberian husky who hasn't learned yet the meaning of the word get down or no yet but they're well on their way because last night my wife and daughter were sitting on the couch over at her house and Savannah says to me go in the laundry room and bring me back my my shop vac I thought my lord is this the time to do housework I didn't realize but the dog responds very well to the sound of a shark dust buster <laughs> I want to tell you something, it's time, amen, to bring out your praise chains. Come on, when we wrap, amen, our world in praise, we wrap the devil in chains. Hell cannot bind you when you're giving God praise. It is you that is binding him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody, I don't know, you got to learn this. You'll never keep the blessing. You'll never keep the victory and not be a worshiper. Worshippers keep the victory. Non-worshippers lose the victory. How many's ever had a CAT scan? How many's ever had a scat scan? I'm gonna scat scan y'all today and find out today who's running from who. If you run from the enemy, the enemy will, will sink his claws into your back and torment you night and day. You are not designed to run from the enemy. There is no armor provided for your back. The devil is supposed to run from you. I said that you don't run from the devil. The devil runs from you. 
And he runs from you the fastest when your hands are in the air and you're giving God high. The Holy Ghost told me that if somebody will let go and give him the high praise, you can chase the devil out of your tomorrow. You can chase the devil out of next week. You can chase the devil out of next year. Oh, somebody. Somebody. Praise him. Let your praise chase the enemy out of your life in Jesus' name. And so here's our trouble. We have settled for deliverance, but we have failed to follow up deliverance with dominion. It is the will of God for us to move from deliverance to dominion. We tend to move from deliverance to defeat. And then from defeat back to deliverance. And we're in a deliverance-defeat cycle. Deliverance, defeat. Deliverance, defeat. Deliverance, defeat. Some of you can't go from one service to the next. God wants to give us a revelation that we need to move from deliverance to dominion. We are designed to exercise dominion over the enemy, someone that might be trapped in this endless cycle of deliverance and defeat is going to move from deliverance to dominion today. America has 5% of the, of the world population. 5% of the population of the world lives in this country, but 25% of the prisoners live here. Something wrong with that. <clears throat> How many's heard the word recidivism? Recidivism is the return rate. <clears throat> many people that spend time behind bars learn to adjust to living in prison. And they don't know how to appreciate freedom. Freedom scares them. So no sooner do they get out, but within just a few months, they're right back in there again because <clears throat> they don't know how to function as a free man or a free woman. How many people in the kingdom of God move from imprisonment to imprisonment to imprisonment to deliverance to imprisonment, deliverance, imprisonment? Can I tell you something? God wants to put the key in your hand. God wants to make you the warden of the jail. God wants not only for you to keep yourself out, but to get others out. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There's freedom in Jesus Christ today. Listen, getting the children of Israel out of Egypt was not the only goal. That was just one stepping stone in the path that would lead them into possession of the promised land. Some of us think the only thing we got to accomplish is get away from Pharaoh again. Have you forgotten what the Lord said when they came through the Red Sea? He said, this Pharaoh and his army, you will see them no more forever. That's what I call going from deliverance to dominion. Egypt never gave Israel trouble ever again. I want to speak to someone who Pharaoh and his chariots keep popping up and bugging you. God wants to tell you something. There is a dominion, amen, where you come out of satanic control and you never go back under the dominion of Satan, but you exercise dominion over the kingdom of Pentecostals, brothers and sisters, worship place family, we must gain dominion over Greensboro and Guilford County. We, I am not Hogan and you're not Hogan's heroes. We are not operating as best we can under the confinement of a prisoner of war camp. We're not just digging tunnels and escaping to do little secret missions. We are going to control the territory. 
We are going to imprison the prison keepers in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is something you receive. Hear me now. Dominion is something you fight for. Israel received deliverance. They didn't have to do anything but follow the glory. And out they went. But if we're not careful... Let me say this again. Deliverance you receive. Dominion must be fought for. God gave them the promised land, but not one inch of the promised land did they receive without fighting for it. Here's what we do. We reverse the process. Oh, someone needs deliverance? Oh, I'm wore out. What have you been doing? I've been casting people, devils out of people and delivering. What we do is we, is we fight for deliverance and try to receive dominion. When God wants us to receive deliverance, and fight for dominion. Oh my God. Come on somebody. Did God make a promise? Fight for it. Fight in prayer. Fight in faith. Kick the Philistines off your promise. Take out the giants. Oh, somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Come on, God, you can receive deliverance, but you have to fight for promises. My God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Israel only got in the land of Canaan what they fought for. Whew. Trust your way out of Egypt. Do you know you, the devil's got you fighting to believe for forgiveness? Trust your way out. Look, trust your way into forgiveness. Fight for gifts. Fight for healing of the sick. Fight for, f fight for people praying through the baptism of the Lord. Fight for God's financial blessing on your life. Fight for anointing and power and breakthrough. Believe. I want to say this about failures and sins. The devil chases, has people chasing their tail over their failures and sins. Everybody has something they've done in their life that you have to trust that God will forgive. That's right, amen. Now, you can either try to undo it or try to wrestle with it or try to rationalize it or try to find something worse in somebody else, or you can just believe that his grace is sufficient. I'm talking about learning how to fight, not just for victory, but fight, fight from victory. We get a little victory, then we relax, and then the enemy takes ground away from us, then we start all over again. Proxy wars. You ever heard that word, proxy war? A proxy war is a battle that you did not start. It's a battle started by somebody else that you have to finish. I don't know who started Vietnam. That was not a popular war. But I know the one that got it started wasn't the one that finished. And sometimes God calls us to finish something that we didn't start. And I feel in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to give you some clarity on... Uh, how to do this and how to go from victory to victory. How many's heard of Haman in the Bible? Wicked Haman, genocidal Haman. Haman who wanted the blood of all of the Jews in the realm of Persia to suffer and to die 
as it were on the gallows. But have you ever stopped to track the origin of Esau, of, of, of Haman's hatred? Haman's hatred goes all the way back to Esau. Esau hated Jacob. Now watch this. Esau hated Jacob, but he never acted upon his hatred. And Amalek is the descendant of Esau. And the hatred that was in Esau's heart entered into the DNA of Amalek. This is how generational curses happen. Hatred, shame, envy, greed, lust, whatever it might be, might occupy somebody way back there. And they didn't deal with it. And sometimes they didn't act on it. But it got translated to the next generation. Watch this. 500 years after Esau hated Jacob, Amalek, the descendants of Esau, were the first people to attack the children of Israel as they were making their way out of Egypt. They attacked the weak. They attacked the straggler. They attract those that were old, and they begin to destroy them. You remember when Moses and Joshua fought against Amalek? And Moses would lift his hands. Oh, hallelujah. And when he lifted his hands, Joshua prevailed over Amalek. And when his hands got tired, Amalek prevailed against the, the Hebrew people. And then when somebody propped up his arms, uh, amen, the victory. Oh, God, I need to look. I don't, I'm just like you. I don't always feel like doing this. But when it looks like I'm not up to my worshipful self, would you help prop up my hands? Would you lift your voice and lift your hands? Uh, because uh, the high praises of God in our mouth is what binds the kings in chains. Forty years after Moses' battle with Amalek, they were about to get into the promised land. And in Deuteronomy, chapter number 25 and verse 19, Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies, round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Thou... <laughs> God is essentially saying there's going to come a day when you're going to move from deliverance to dominion. Amalek is not going to do you in. There's going to come a day when they won't matter anymore. They are going to be wiped out. Watch what happens during this genealogy of a hatred. Esau hated in his heart. Amalek inherited the hatred in his DNA. And Saul's first assignment in 1 Samuel 15 and 2 was to destroy Amalek. Every last living vestige of the people of Amalek were to be destroyed. What did Saul do? He killed some of them. And kept Agag. Everyone said Agag. Just all right, I got about five more minutes. Can you stay with me? Agag. He was the king of Amalek. Saul started a war that he didn't finish. And Esther was called upon to finish what Saul started. Saul was supposed to free Israel of Amalek. And Amalek was to never bother them again. But rather than transfer victories to the next generation, 
He transferred enemies to the next generation. And I want to preach to somebody who doesn't know or understand why you're having to fight what you're having to fight. Chances are somebody started a battle that they should have finished. And rather than pass covenants and blessings and victories to you, they passed hatred and contempt and generational spirits. But don't despair. The God that I serve is going to bring you from deliverance to dominion today. And you're going to learn how to get the victory and keep it in Jesus' name. Amen. Esther chapter number 3 verse number 1 says this. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Aga, the Aga, the Aga, the who? The Agite. He came from the Agites. He came from Agag. He was an Amalekite. A thousand years later, a spirit of Amalek rises up in Haman and tries to assassinate all of the people of Israel. Oh, come on, somebody say proxy war. Come on, Saul started a battle he couldn't finish. And he left a remnant Agag who produced the lineage that resulted in Haman. And Haman wanted to continue in the bloodshed began by the hatred in Esau. Somebody hear me right now. Esther 2 and verse 5. Now in Shushan, the palace where there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, the son of who? The son of Kish. Haman came from Agag. Esther came from Saul. The battle continued. And this time, what Saul couldn't do, Esther, by the power of the Holy Ghost, was going to take care of once and for all. Oh, come on. I want somebody to praise God. The victory your granddaddy couldn't get over alcohol, you got it. Come on, the victory over drug abuse, uh, your kinfolk uh, have been shackled by, you've been delivered from it. Oh, somebody is a representative of a family tree that's been embedded in defeat. And by the grace of God, you're going to get the victory, not just for yourself, but for your family line. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. God is calling on us to finish what we didn't even start by the grace of God. Oh, Ramasata. Oh, stand to your feet. Turn to somebody and say, let addiction end with you. Turn to somebody else and say, let absentee fatherhood end with you. Turn to someone else say, let poverty end with you. Come on in the name of... Oh, Ramasata Labaha. How did Esther defeat the spirit of Amalek? She took it to the king. Somebody needs to gather up all the hurt, all the pain, all the brokenness, all the shame, and take it into the throne room and present it to the king. Oh, Ramama Satala. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Somebody's going to get the victory and keep it. Take it to the king. Take it to the king. Snakes don't, eagles don't fight cobras on the ground. On the ground, an eagle is no match for a cobra because the snake needs, needs the ground in order to leverage itself to make the strike. So what does the eagle do? It goes down and snatches the poisonous snake and changes battlefields. 
Hell will beat you every time if you try to fight thoughts with thoughts. You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. You fight thoughts with praise. You need to take him to the throne. Oh, I want, uh, somebody who wants to fight with praise. Come on, step out. Let's gather around here and praise him. Praise him for the victory. Praise him for the victory. Somebody's been trying to fight thoughts with thoughts. Uh uh. Psychology won't keep you delivered. Praise will. Praise will. Oh, Rema Sanda la Maha Sata la Maha. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. The high praises of God will be in their mouth. Sharp two-edged sword in their hand. Hell can't operate in the heavenlies. Hell can't operate before the throne of the Almighty. Come on, Esther. Come on, finish. Finish what your great-great-granddad started. Woo! You say there's psychosis runs in the family. You say depression runs in the family. Not anymore! <laughs>